Assalamu alaikum. Dear students, I am here, Hafiz Muhammad Ammar, co-teacher microbiology, course code BOTN4128. Lecture number 19, Preservation of Pure Cultures. The contents which will be covered today's lecture will include maintaining cultures, uh, where we will study stock cultures, aseptic techniques and reference culture and preservation of cultures where we will study different techniques for preserving the bacterial cultures once an organism has been isolated it can be maintained in a pure culture which is called as stock culture normally in laboratories the pure culture are transferred periodically into a fresh medium that is also called uh, subculturing this allows the continuous growth and viability of the microorganisms. The transfer is always subjected to aseptic conditions to avoid contamination. Organisms in stock cultures go through different growth phases and deplete nutrients and accumulate wastes just as those in any cultures do. As the culture ages, the organisms may require odd shapes or other altered characteristics. So stock cultures are maintained by making subcultures in fresh medium at frequent intervals to keep the organisms growing. The most important in all manipulations of the cultures is the careful aseptic technique. Aseptic technique minimizes the chance that uh, cultures will be uh, contaminated by organisms from the environment or that organisms, especially pathogens, will escape into the environment. Such techniques are especially important in making subcultures from stock cultures. Otherwise, an undesirable organism might be introduced and the stock organism would have to be re-isolated. Even with regular transfers of the organisms from stock culture to fresh media, organisms can go undergo mutations uh, like changes in DNA and may develop altered characteristics. In laboratories where anaerobes are regularly handled and an aerobic transfer chamber is often used as being shown in these figures. Equipment and cultures are introduced through an airlock and the technicians uses gloves ports to manipulate the cultures. Let's have some detailed discussion about aseptic technique. What are the objectives of the aseptic technique? To acquire the skill of aseptic technique in the field of microbiology and to prevent contamination of cultures and media from microbes in the environment and to transfer cultures from one medium by inoculating another medium uh, which is called as subculturing. And another objective is to isolate a microorganism from a mixed culture to obtain a pure culture and to prevent lab microorganisms from being spread in the environment and or infecting the investigator. So prevention is another object objective of the aseptic technique. It is a fundamental and important lab skill in the field of microbiology. Microbiologists use uh, aseptic technique for a variety of procedures such as uh, transferring cultures, inoculating media, isolation of pure cultures and for performing microbiological tests. So pro proper aseptic technique prevents contamination of cultures from foreign bacteria inherent in the environment. For example, airborne microorganisms including fungi, microbes picked up from the researcher's body the lab bench top or other surfaces 
microbes found in dust as well as microbes found on unsterilized glassware and equipment these are may potentially contaminate cultures so uh, by interfering the lab results so use of proper aseptic technique can greatly minimize or even eliminate the risk of contamination aseptic technique is of utmost importance to maintain a pure stock cultures while transferring cultures to a new media so it is also essential for isolation of a single species of microorganisms from a mixed culture to obtain a pure culture so proper aseptic technique prevents microbes used in the lab for from accidentally being released into the environment or infecting the people working in the lab so this is specially relevant when pathogens are being handled significance of uh, flaming in the aseptic technique if we talk about uh, flaming loop what is the flaming loop the loop in the flame uh, holding the loop in the flame of the bunsen burner kills all contaminating organisms so sterilize the loop loop should glow red hot for a few seconds after flaming make sure to slightly cool the loop before picking up organisms from the inoculum culture uh, which is to be transferred when transferring a culture from plate cool the loop by touching on the very edge of the agar when transferring from a uh, broth the red hot loop will make a sizzling noise as soon as uh, you insert it into the culture the loop will automatically cool once it makes contact with the broth culture but wait a uh, one or two seconds before removing the loop full of inoculum from the tube the hot loop may create aerosols when it touches the media containing organisms it may cause some of the broth and bacteria to be boil briefly creating a bacteria containing aerosol so this airborne bacteria have the chances of entering into the respiratory tract or into the body parts if you hear a hissing sound when you place the heat sterilized loop into the broth culture that indicates that loop is not cooled sufficiently flaming the mouth of the test tube passing the mouth of a tube through the flame of a bunsen burner creates a conventional current which uh, forces air out of the tube so this prevents airborne contaminants from entering in the tube the heat of the bunsen burner also causes the air around your work area to rise reducing the chances of airborne microorganisms contaminating your cultures agar slants cultures are often transferred to agar slants in addition to broth tubes and agar plates An agar slant is a test tube containing agar in which the solid agar form is uh, forms a slant in the test tube. When inoculating an agar slant, draw the loop containing the inoculum very lightly over the surface in a zigzag formation, while being careful not to break the surface. A needle can be used instead of a loop to inoculate an agar slant by stabbing the needle. containing the inoculum onto the agar probably the easiest way to create a relatively sterile environment on the lab bench is by using a simple gas powdered burner this common piece of equipment burns a continuous stream of a flammable gas usually natural gas like methane based upon a design made almost 150 years ago by the german chemist robert wilhelm bunsen a major purpose of the open flame in aseptic technique is to create a cone of hot air above and around the lab bench to reduce the viability of the organisms on suspended dust particles the ability of the bunsen burner flame to heat things very quickly 
also makes it an ideal choice for sterilizing the inoculating loop warming glass bottlenecks or igniting alcohol on culture spreaders a bunsen burner is not a practical in some situations uh, like within a laminar flow unit where the heat will be disrupt air flow a micro burner may be used as an alternative in the laminar flow unit this micro burner consists of a circulator uh, circular heating element and placing an inoculating loop or needle within the ring will quickly heat and sterilize the loop bunsen burner the gas burner consists of a vertical metal tube through which a narrow jet of natural gas is directed air is drawn in via air holes located near the stand the gas air mixture burner makes the burners above the upper opening the regular regulating collar can be turned to cover or per, partly cover the air holes which allows regulating of the amount of air sucked in and hence the temperature and shape of the flame can be controlled the other thing is the laminar flow unit it is uh, uh, also called hood uh, and it is a very sophisticated appliance that can further help prevent contamination of Uh, reagents and biological cultures if it is used correctly it provides the workspace with clean ultra filtered air it also keeps room air from entering the work area and both suspends and removes airborne contaminants introduced into the work area by a personnel the most important part of laminar flow hood is a highly efficiency bacteria retention filter also called hipa a certified hipa filter must capture a minimum of 99.97% of the dust pollen mold bacteria any airborne particles with a size of 0.3 micrometer at 85 liters per minute the first hipa filters were developed in the 1940s by the usa atomic energy commission as part of the manhattan project which was the development of the atomic bomb to provide an efficient effective way to uh, filter radioactive particle contaminants hipa filter technology was un uh, de- declassified after world war 2 allowing extensive research and commercial use laminar flow hoods are essential components of many biosafety level laboratories where they help prevent spread of viruses and some bacteria to avoid the risk of contamination and to reduce the mutation rate stock culture organisms also should be kept in a preserved culture a culture in which organisms are maintained in a dormant state the most commonly used technique for preserving culture is lyophilization freeze drying in which cells are quickly frozen hydrated while frozen and sealed in while under vacuum such cultures can be kept indefinitely at room temperature because organisms frequently undergo genetic changes that's why reference cultures are maintained a reference culture is a preserved culture that maintains the organisms with the characteristics as original reference cultures of all known species and strains of bacteria and many other microorganisms are maintained in the american type culture collection and many are maintained in universities and research centers then if stock culture is a particular laboratory undergo changes or if other laboratories wish to obtain certain organisms for study reference cultures are available over there techniques used for preservation the most commonly used techniques for preserving culture are as follows refrigeration paraffin method cryopreservation 
and lyophilization which is also called freeze drying method strains can be maintained by periodically preparing a fresh culture from the previous stock cultures the culture medium the storage temperature and the time interval at which the transfers are made vary with the species must be determined earlier the temperature and the type of medium should support a slow rather than a rapid rate of growth so that the time interval between transfers can be as long as possible many of the more common heterotrophs remain viable for several weeks or months on a medium like nutrient agar medium the transfer method has the disadvantages of failing to prevent changes in the characteristics of the strain due to the development of variants and mutants refrigeration pure cultures can be successfully stored at 0 to 4 degrees celsius either in refrigerator or in cold rooms this method is applied for short duration like 2 to 3 4 weeks for bacteria 3 uh, to 4 months for fungi because uh, the metabolic activities of the microorganisms are greatly slowed down but not stopped thus the growth continues slowly nutrients are utilized and waste products are released in the medium this results in uh, finally the death of the microbes after some time paraffin methods this is a simple and most economical method of maintaining pure cultures of bacteria and fungi in this method the sterile liquid paraffin is poured over the slant which is made in the culture and stored upright at room temperature as shown in the figure The layer of paraffin ensures anaerobic conditions and prevents dehydration of the medium. The condition helps microorganisms or pure cultures to remain in the dormant state. Therefore, the culture can be preserved from months to years varies with the species. The advantage of this method is that we can remove some of the growth under the oil with a transfer needle. and inoculate a fresh media and still preserve the original culture if we talk about the disadvantage of the method the simplicity of the method makes is it uh, attractive but changes in characteristics of a strain can still occur in this method cryopreservation as uh, being shown in the figures freezing in liquid nitrogen at minus 190 degrees celsius or uh, in the gas phase above the liquid nitrogen at minus 150 degrees celsius cryopreservation helps the survival of pure cultures for long storage times In this method the microorganisms of cultures are rapidly frozen in like liquid nitrogen at minus 190 degrees celsius a 196 degrees celsius in the presence of stabilizing agents such as glycerol or dimethyl sulfoxide that prevents the cell damage due to formation of ice crystals and promote cell survival This liquid nitrogen method has been successfully with many species that cannot be preserved by lyophilization and most species can remain viable under these conditions for 10 to 30 years without undergoing changes in their characters. But this math- method is very expensive method. 
lyophilization or deep freeze drying is a process in which water is removed from a product after it is frozen and placed under a vacuum that allows the ice to change directly from solid to vapor phases without passing through a liquid phase freeze drying is a process where water and other solvents are removed from a frozen product via sublimation sublimation occurs when a frozen liquid goes directly to a gaseous state without entering a liquid phase it is recommended using slow rates of cooling as this will results in the formation of vertical ice crystal structures that allowing for more efficient water sublimation from the frozen product freeze dried products are hygroscopic and must be protected from moisture during storage under these conditions the microbial cells are dehydrated and their metabolic activities are stopped as a result the microbes go into dormant state and retain viability for years lyophilized or freeze dried pure cultures then sealed and stored in the dark at 4 degrees celsius in refrigerators this method is the most frequently used technique by culture collection centers Many species of bacteria preserved by this method have remained viable and unchanged in their characters for more than 30 years. Advantages of lyophilization. Only minimal storage space is required. Hundreds of lyophilized cultures can be stored in a small area. small vials can be sent conveniently through the mail to other microbiology laboratories when packaged in a special sealed mailing containers lyophilized cultures can be revived by opening the vials adding liquid media and transferring the rehydrated culture to a suitable growth medium that's all from today's lecture Uh, i hope you understood well the here is the reference material where from this uh, lecture was prepared you can also study these uh, reference materials which are available thank you very much